Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out Crash Dive, a game that you can find on Steam for 7 bucks. It's important to note that I have not played this game before, so this is going to be a first impressions video I'll be learning as I play the game today. So here's a look at the main menu, specifically the options menu. Here you can do a factory reset, which I've never seen before. Enable theme music, uh, so you can toggle that on or off. I have the music turned off for the sake of the commentary and to prevent any sort of copyright issues. You've got your volume slider here. Now this is a little weird. GUI layout. Touch or mouse. So I'm not exactly sure what the difference is. Touch just makes everything bigger. My guess is that this game came from uh, like an iPhone or uh, is a port of a phone. Uh, so that might be where that's coming from. But I really don't know what the difference is. I guess I'll put it on mouse and see what that does. There's a graphics quality slider here, and then that's it. So here's the main menu. You've got play, high score, settings, which you just saw, and then there's about. So let's go ahead and hit play and uh, see what we get. War Patrol, random mission, challenge mission, tutorials. Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and play the tutorials because I've never played this game before and I want to learn how to play. So hopefully this will uh, do a good job in teaching me everything I need to know. Intro and navigation. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Well, the water effect's really cool. Navigation. Learn to maneuver your submarine. Really liking the water there. Alright, this is your periscope view. Pan left and right by clicking and dragging left or right. I see. I see. So, left click and then drag left and right. There we go. So, I'm moving around. There we go. Alright, what's next? To actually turn your boat, hold down the left or right arrow button on the screen. Your view will remain pointed at the same angle while your sub rotates. So, alright, so the arrow keys, I think, move the periscope as well. Alright, so, to actually hold down the left or right arrow button on the screen. So, is that what this rudder is here? Alright, so I'm holding that in, and I can see the degrees down there changing on me. It says 199 right now. But I also can change it by swiveling the periscope. Okay. Alright, so in this view, the compass shows what direction your sub is pointed, I see, relative to where you're looking. The green pie slice is your view, with the sub symbol rotated under it. Alright, so I see. So the I'm holding in the right arrow key right now, and I'm also using the left click and swiveling left and right, and that green cone is swiveling around. Uh, let me just put this cone in the front like that, and then I'm going to hit this rudder button on the... Is that also not working? It's kind of strange. Oh, okay, I see. So that's turning the ship now. Alright, so the rudder buttons turn the ship on the compass, whereas clicking and dragging or using the arrow keys just simply um, swivel the periscope. Alright. Navigate. Uh, click the compass to automatically turn your sub to face the direction you're currently looking. Alright, so let's click on that. Oh, I see. Alright, so my ship is moving now. To zoom your view in and out, use the plus and minus buttons. Okay, I can also use the middle mouse wheel from the looks of it. There we go. Control the speed of your sub with the throttle controls. Alright, so R, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay. You can turn faster when the sub is moving forward or backward. Okay. Click this for flank speed, the fastest your sub can go. Alright, there we go. Click here to reverse your sub. Your reverse speed is about half of your top forward speed. So I'm going to click on that. Alright, to dive, click the button to lower your target depth. Click it multiple times to go deeper. So I'm just going to click it once. 25, that's strange. So can I actually pick a depth? Like, that would be useful. To ascend, click the ascend button to raise your target depth. So it looks like it's in increments of 25 here. Your sub will always try to dive or ascend until it reaches this target depth. A target depth of zero will cause your sub to surface. Your current depth is displayed here. The red light will flash to warn you when you're approaching dangerous pressure levels. Click this button to switch between the periscope view and the tactical chart view. 
This is your chart view. It can provide a more useful tactical overview. It's also, this is also the only view available when your periscope is underwater. I think it means that. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Okay. To turn in chart view, just click any empty space on the chart. Your sub will turn to face that point. A sweep indicator on your sub will show how far it has left to turn. Alright, so if I do that... Oh, okay. It's like a little green arc there. Click and drag anywhere on the chart to pan your view around. Okay. You zoom in and out, use the plus or minus buttons. I'm using the mouse wheel. It just seems to be easier. Okay. In addition to the usual zoom in, zoom out buttons, the chart view also has a, a button to center the view to, on your sub. Alright, this is that. Okay, cool. If you're just waiting for a convoy to move into position, you can accelerate time by clicking this button. Those are the basics. Now it's time for some combat. Learn how to fight other ships and defend your sub. For this, we'll need something to shoot at. Hang on while I spawn a victim for you. Okay. You should now see a transport ship ahead and to the left. Pan your view. I already did that. Click and drag the view until the ship is in the center of the screen. Okay. Right there. When your periscope view is centered on a ship, you'll see a yellow marker pop up above it. This indicator marks your currently targeted ship. As your crew studies the targeted ship, you'll see info on it appear in this box. They'll start with the most useful data, speed, heading, etc. But eventually you'll know everything about it right down to its name. Your crew will also be trying to calculate a torpedo fire solution for that ship. That's the direction you would need to fire a torpedo in order to intercept the ship at its current course and speed. Alright. The progress of calculating a fire solution is displayed on this bar. If it fills up and turns green, the next torpedo you fire should intercept the targeted ship. Or, if the progress bar turns red, that means the there is no solution for hitting that ship. The bar will give you an explanation for why that is. Well, I don't think I'm facing it. Beyond fire arc. Currently, the target ship is too far to the left of the torpedo tube's fire arc. Click the compass button to turn your sub toward the targeted ship. There we go. So that turned green down here. All right. So click the red button. Fires a torpedo. Oh, I can see it barely. Might actually miss. Well, no. It might hit the, the right side there. Wow. That guy dodged it, maybe? Should I fire another one? Alright, let's click it again. There it goes. Luckily, I have 20 torpedoes. Alright, that one looks like it's gonna hit. Four, three. Torpedo, damage the Cape Matapan. Hit. Not that it would be possible to miss a stationary target at this range, but it's still exciting. Well, I'm pretty sure I missed the first time. The fire solution calculator is especially helpful with a moving target. I've spawned a new transport, this time moving. Try to get a green target lock and hit it. Alright, so I need to find it. Oh, there it is. Alright, calculating firing solution. And what's it say? Targeted. Alright, so we'll shoot one. 30 seconds, so it should appear somewhere over here. There it is. Heading toward the target now. Alright, I increased my throttle just so I get closer to it. You can see the range counting down here. Eight, seven, six, five. I guess that timer is time to impact. Wow, dead center. This guy's gonna get messed up. Bam. Very good. Now let's try to manage multiple fire solutions. I've created a four ship convoy. See so if you can get a target lock on one of them. 
Good, now pan to a different ship and get a target lock on it. Very good. Its torpedo solution will remain useful for a little while, then will begin to gradually decay over time. Try looking back and forth between two ships to maintain both torpedo solutions. There we go. Great, now try adding a third ship. If I can find a third ship. Oh, there it is. There it goes. Beyond firing arc. Targeted. Beyond firing arc. Alright. I, I get the gist of it. Excellent. You have solutions calculated for the three ships. This means you could launch a series of torpedoes in rapid succession, taking out multiple ships quickly and giving you more time to escape. But I was moving ahead, so I probably messed up the tutorial. Periscope scene. Your periscope was spotted by the AOG-74 Teleco. Wonderful. If you still can't wait for a computed solution, you can still try firing directly. Without a targeting solution, the torpedo will just travel straight toward where you were looking at the time you fired. If the torpedo fire button light is red, that means your current view angle is outside the fire arc of your torpedo tube, just like with the fire solution calculator. You can click the compass button to reorient your sub. With or without a firing solution, sometimes you need to hedge your odds of hitting a ship. For those moments, there is the torpedo spread, which fires three torpedoes with three degrees of separation between them. That's useful. You can fire a spread by holding down the torpedo fire button for a few seconds. Alright, I'll try that. Let me get a firing solution on this guy first. Targeted. There we go. Well, at least two will hit from the looks of it. This is a costly move because you have limited torpedoes, but when an angry destroyer is bearing down on you, it can mean the difference between life and death. When in combat, keep an eye on how many torpedoes you have left. Larger ships take more to sink, and you do not want to run out of ammo in the middle of a battle. These lights indicate how many torpedo tubes are ready to fire. If it's flashing green, then that torpedo tube is still being loaded. All right. I missed that tutorial message, but okay. Oh, there it is. Alright, did you notice that as soon as you targeted that ship behind you, your crew automatically switched your controls to the aft tube? They're a smart crew, maybe too smart. You better keep a close eye on them. Okay, so I can shoot out of the rear too, which is kind of nice. You can also manually switch between the bow and aft tubes with this toggle switch. I've only got one in the back though. Go ahead and fire at that ship behind you using your aft torpedo tube. Speed up time if I can. Bam. By the way, you've probably noticed this notification bar at the top of the screen. It will let you know when important things happen, even if they occur off screen. Okay. Some final info on torpedoes. They have a range of about 4,000 meters before they will run out of power and sink. Good luck hitting anything at that range, though. Beyond 3,000 meters is more luck than accuracy. To prevent them from damaging their own sub, their warheads only arm after they've traveled 250 meters. This means they won't detonate if they hit a ship closer than that. Alright, note to self. Torpedo torpedoing ships through the periscope is great fun, but sometimes you need more tactical information than the periscope can give you. For that, we have a chart crew. Switch to the chart view now to see more tactical data. All right. Click on the ship that you want to target. All right, this one. Or do I have to click this one? Does it matter? Even when you aren't personally looking through the periscope, the torpedo solution system works exactly the same here as when you're targeting through the periscope. But much of the time when you're in combat, you are below periscope depths. Without a visual fix on the target, your crew can't calculate a torpedo solution. Take your boat down to 50 meters now to simulate actual combat conditions. 
down to 50. At any depth below 10 meters, torpedo solutions are unavailable, so you have to manually target ships. For this, chart view size has some visual aids. First, the range rings are radiating out from your sub, giving you a quick overview of enemy ship distances. Yeah, I see that. So you've got like 250 meters, 500, 750, 1000. Okay. There's also some time here. Also, note the red line with the time markers, that's what I just said, extending out from the front of the targeting ship. This lets you know approximately where that ship will be at those times. I imagine a manual targeting solution might be a little difficult. A similar but yellow line extends from the front of your sub. This shows you where your torpedo would be at those times if you were to fire one this instant. Oh, I see. So what I'd want to do, like, if I wanted to... Let's turn. So... All right. So around, and I'm just eyeballing it here, but this says 23 seconds here, so I'd want to fire this when the red 20 crosses this yellow line here. Let's try it just to be, let's just, you know, let's just try it. Alright, let's get one more shot. I just want to see if, if, it, if that's right. Alright, I'm going to speed up time for a minute. That looks about look. I did I did some damage there. Okay, so that 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 synopsis there was accurate. Okay. By noting where those two lines intersect and making sure the yellow line and red lines near that in intersection are close, you can greatly improve your chances of hitting what you're aiming at, which I just did. Try using the range lines to hit one of the tar. I just did. Crap. All right, let's do this one. So this is 11 seconds. So we're gonna turn, make it so that it's uh, well. I'd say that's more like. Let's just shoot that. Around this time. We should hit. I don't know if it's going to be dead center, but... Yeah, it, it's good. There's two of them. Nice shot. Manually, targeting uh, is far from easy, but the better you are the better you are at it, the more chance of survival you have. Alright. Got that. Alright, so what else is here? In addition to torpedoes, your U-boat is armed with a formidable 88mm deck gun. This weapon is especially useful for sinking unprotected transports without using up valuable torpedoes. Alright, so I guess I'll need to ascend. Let's go ahead and do that. Fast forward time. Switch to the bridge view. Okay, there we go. When, you're first, when you first surface, it takes some time for your crew to make this gun ready for combat. The rotary timer will show you how much longer they have before you can fire. Let's go over the basics. The deck gun is an artillery cannon firing shells with 9 kilogram warheads over distances of up to 3,000 meters. Your gr gun crew will manage the vertical arc of the gun, making sure the shell travels the correct distance. Your job is the left and right aiming, and making sure you lead a fast moving target. I see. Fire accuracy drops rapidly below or beyond about 2,000 meters. Okay. When your sub is surfaced, you will be standing on the bridge rather than using the periscope. Click the zoom button to use your binoculars. I see. Okay, you have a green light on your deck gun, so it looks like the crew is ready. Alright, so let's see if we can find. Is there a ship? There's. Yep. Yeah. Well, first, let's move our ship toward that ship, and we'll go ahead and speed up a bit. Or I can target this. This one's closer. Alright, so... Let's see, deck gun? There we go. Keep in mind that shells do not nearly... don't do nearly as much damage as torpedoes. Try to score a few more hits. All right. Boom. All right. Got it. Looks like you've got the hang of it. Let's move on to stealth and avoidance tactics. 
Being able to escape detection by the enemy is essential to your survival. You are heavily outgunned and need to be able to sneak in, sink a target, and get away. Don't plan on spending much time on the surface. Once you are spotted, the enemy gunships will quickly start raining a hailstorm of shells upon your head and force you under. You are currently surfaced, and there is a corvette dead ahead about 2,500 meters out. See how close you can get before he spots you. Don't worry, his ammo has been removed so he can't actually attack. Alright. So, I need to dive. Guess we'll do 50 meters. So he's somewhere up this way, right? Yeah, there he is. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward. All right, sending to twenty five. No, I don't want to turn. There you go. This may take a while. Let's go ahead and surface. Or I get the periscope. There we go. Let's use the periscope now. There we go. Calculating firing solution. So I could shoot if I want to. I'm going to go ahead and speed up time here. It goes to 16x. That's kind of useful. Periscope scene. The HMS sitting duck. Okay. Now what? So what do I have to do? Just shoot it down now? Well, that's not good. Hi! I'd probably be dead by now if that was actually a real Corvette. Oh, there goes the death charges. <laughs> death charges just dropped. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, surface real quick here. There we are. Hi! I think I got the hang of this. I might just get rid of the... Okay, there we go. Oops, looks like he still had one round in the chamber. Well, don't worry, we'll probably miss. It always takes an allied gun. Okay, well, it doesn't look like he missed. At night, you can usually sneak in close as uh, 500 meters without being seen. Your only risk of initial detection is if they spot your periscope, which they can only do at fairly close range. Okay. Alright, so again, I think I'm I'm ready to move on here. Let's just let's see what other modes are available. Uh, let's go ahead and do looks like I was on stealth and evasion. Damage and repairing is the only other thing I haven't done yet. So maybe in a future video or just off camera, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the different missions. There's War Patrol, Random Mission, and Challenge Mission. I want to see how many Challenge Missions there are. Challenge 1, Graduation Day. Um, the Troop Transport USS West Point is bound for Liverpool. Okay, there's two, three. Okay, so there's three Challenge Missions from the looks of it. All right. Uh, random Mission. What's that? Easy, Medium, Hard, Sim, Custom. Complete one mission on sim to unlock this difficulty level. Oh, okay. So it looks like there's... That's, I'm, I'm glad to see that there's different random missions. Uh, let's check out War Patrol. Easy, medium, hard, sim, or custom. I wish I knew what this sim and custom meant. Alright, let's try easy. 1942, the North Atlantic. The Allies are shipping millions of tons of war material. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So I've been given a U-boat. So basically, I guess I'm a German U-boat. Alright. This game reminds me a little bit of Silent Service 2, if you've ever played that. Patrol Link, Day 2. Okay, so here I am. I can move around here. Convoy spotted. Lookout report. One transport with no escort. Uh, yeah. 
So, like Silent Service 2 for the NES, um, it might have been on the computers too, but I, I had it for the NES. Basically, you, on this particular patrol mode, would just, just go around the map trying to pick fights and see how many ships you can sink, and then your tonnage would be added at the end for your final score. I'm assuming that's how this works here too. I'm gonna rotate my ship there. Alright, um... I'm gonna get a little bit closer, I think. As long as he maintains that course, I should be okay. Range 1200 meters. Turning the ship now. 1,000 meters. Alright, I think I'll go ahead and shoot and hope for the best here. I could always use my deck gun, but I don't know if they have any, like, weapons. It's a tanker, so I, don't, I couldn't imagine they would. Alright, I'm gonna shoot and see what that does. I'm gonna lower my speed a bit. Let's see what happens. Looks like a hit. I'm gonna slow down. Ship sunk. Nice. So I did hit it. Did he just send out a flare? There it goes. Yeah, this game definitely reminds me of Silent Service. Too. It, it, it was a very fun game. It's a game I played a lot as a kid. Alright, so yeah, displacement 5,900. Yep, 5,900 tons. So, yeah, like that other game I was mentioning, Silent Service 2, your tonnage here acts as sort of like a score. Alright, so now that that engagement is over, I come back to the map. And, okay, I do have fuel up here. But if I go to resupply, I bet I can, yeah, get that fuel back. Um, yeah, three transports, no escorts. I'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so like the other ones, let's go ahead and get closer. Actually, we're, we're already fairly close here. So what I want to do is um, get target locks on all three if I can at the same time. Just so I can sink all three at the same time. Let's go ahead and get closer. Beyond firing arc. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my sh periscope this way and then rotate my ship. Alright, 1500 meters. Um... This one's getting too close for comfort. I'm going to go ahead and just sink this now. Or at least do some damage. Go ahead and shoot a torpedo. Target this guy. We'll go ahead and launch a torpedo there. Target that one. That's a little far away for my liking. Let's go ahead and uh, rotate my ship. Torpedo hit. Damage the HMS assistance. Well, I damaged it. That doesn't mean I destroyed it. So I'm going to shoot again. Beyond firing arc, of course. Alright, so let me rotate this ship. Slow down. Again, there's that minimum range of 250 meters. Alright, torpedo away. Ship sunk. Nice. So this is going down. There's a ship right beyond it that I need to get. I think we'll fire one more torpedo just to be on the safe side. And we'll rotate the ship. Hopefully I don't crash into this thing. There we go. Alright. Ship sunk. Alright, so I did get that one over there. It's gone. Last one. We'll send two torpedoes out. And that should do it. I kind of like the uh, compass for moving my ship as opposed to uh, this rudder over here. This makes it so much easier. And it looks like it hits. Yep. Damage the SS Harry Tolman. Alright, well did I sink it? 
We'll find out in a minute. Yeah, it looks like it's going down. Yep. Alright. Oh, that's a lot of tonnage. 33,976. Alright. Let's see if we can uh, resupply real quick. I got some achievements for that. Stop for resupply repairs. It will take about 12 hours. Um... No, I don't think I need to. Not right now, anyway. I still have seven torpedoes. Seventeen torpedoes, rather. Oh, convoy report. Let's go ahead and check that out. Five transports and two escorts. Alright. Alright, this is going to be a little challenging. Uh, luckily, I started at Periscope Depth. Um, I need to be careful. There, those escorts. Oh, that's. I like the graphics. This, this is beautiful right here. That's awesome. So, I, I'm really liking the water effects. All right, let's go ahead and just uh, we'll move forward a little bit. See what we're up against. Targeted. What is that? That's a transport. All right, that one is beyond the firing arc, but it, it's a uh, class tanker from the looks of it. Let's go ahead and rotate the ship around. It looks like they're heading from left to right on my periscope view. So I think we'll cut them off at the pass here. Alright, so what's the closest ship? That one... Oh, what's this one back here? That is unknown at this time. Oh, Liberty Class Cargo Transport. What's this one? Increasing speed. Alright, what is this one? It's a class tanker. Alright, so the escorts are somewhere. I just don't know where they are. They're, I bet you they're, like, beyond these guys. Unless they're behind me and I just don't know it. Let's check this chart view. Yeah, I see... Yeah, there's the tanker. There's the... Oh, there's the Corvette back there. So it's... 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 Luckily, it's beyond range, so I can, like, get a few shots off and sink some of these ships, and they won't be any the wiser. But there was two, two of them, so we're, oh, there it is, okay. I need to be careful, that's going to take me right, right there, so I'm going to reduce speed for now. Uh, go back to periscope view, and this one's nice and close, so I'm going to try and sink this one first. Alright, beyond firing arcs, so let's go ahead and rotate my ship. Targeted and fire. We'll shoot two torpedoes. Switch to this target. Now, can I shoot these torpedoes before the other ship gets in the way? Torpedo hit. Damage the whatever that is. I might have synced it. Did I sink it? Yeah, it looks like it's going down. I'm going to shoot one more torpedo, and there is a Corvette coming. I'm going to reverse speed. Ah, uh, this is not good. Alright. Moving backward at five knots. Rotating my ship. I'm going to go ahead and shoot. And hopefully hit it from here. Uh, the other one... I don't see the other one. Uh, I'm gonna shoot another tor- Oh, did I hit it? Ship sank. Flower class Corvette HMCS Moose Jaw is going down. Okay. But there's that other Corvette out there I need to worry about. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, rotate my ship so I can see this way. Oh, there it is. Is that it here? Yes. Alright, so I need to rotate my ship. Get a firing solution on that bad boy. He's coming right for me. All right, ship, turn faster. Come on, turn faster. All right, in the meantime, I'm going to see if I can get a uh, firing solution on these here. See if I can sink a few. Beyond firing arc, of course. All right, I'll concentrate on this guy. All right, he's getting too close for comfort. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, come on. All right, targeted. Fire. Two of them should do it. Uh-oh. Did he just turn? All right, one more torpedo. 
Periscope has been seen. Nice, I hit him. Torpedo failed to detonate. I got the first one in, so hopefully this ship will sink. Man, I fired that first torpedo right in the nick of time. Alright, I'm going to switch speed to three and go after these guys here. Actually, I'm going to slow down so I can turn. There we go. Come on. Come on. Targeted fire. Two torpedoes ought to do it. And then there's this guy over here. Let's go ahead and rotate. Two torpedoes. Did I shoot one or two? Another one for good measure. Okay, it looks like we sunk that one. We're good. Oh, there's one more back there. Alright, let's go ahead and rotate again. Missed that one. Increasing speed. It looks like those are going to hit. On the face of it, it looks like it's going to hit. Alright. It's going down. Alright. Let's turn our ship toward this. Looks like they're trying to hightail it out of here. I don't blame them. But I'd like to get a little bit closer before we actually fire. Let's go ahead and fast forward time. <laughs> Look at all the life preservers. Looks like he's going to be outrunning me here. Uh, let's go ahead and shoot off a torpedo, see if we can get lucky. I might have to surface and hope that I can catch him that way. Am I going to hit him with that torpedo? No. Alright, so he might actually get away. I'm going to go ahead and uh, surface. I'll go faster that way. Alright. Nine hundred meters, we'll go ahead and shoot the deck gun. Alright, we're getting some damage done here. Let's go ahead and slow down. I don't want to be too close. And it's gone. Booyah! Look at all that. 41,624 tons. Not too bad. Not too bad. Alright, uh, I'm gonna go and resupply out of torpedoes. Yes. There we go. Is there a save feature? Save and exit, yes. Okay, so there you have it. A quick look at Crash Dive. Um, not exactly the most realistic submarine simulator I've ever played, but uh, I don't mind that. Uh, just because sometimes those hardcore simulators can take hours to learn, whereas this one took me what, 10, 15 minutes to figure out. It helps having played Silent Service 2 for the NES back in the day, as both games seem to be somewhat similar. But um, yeah, it's pretty enjoyable for seven bucks if you like submarine games, but prefer an arcadey uh, feel about it as opposed to a hardcore simulator feel about it, then I would check this one out. So if you guys want to see more gameplay video, let me know. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.